Right. There are a lot of things that have been said about Kama Piliat, Nasr Tinabi, and also Urowen Human. And we're going to look at the latest about them and also another winger that was linked with the KZ Chiefs that two KZ Mtaung Jr. has quickly shut down. Hello and welcome to Coast Nation Fan TV. I am Pelo, I am your host, and this, this is where fans meet and talk about KZ Chiefs. I'm a Kusi. Football club. Right. So... First of all, let's start talking about this. There were reports of Kama Piliat and 800,000 with KZ Chiefs. Now, Sokala Tuma reported that Kama Piliat and 500,000 at KZ Chiefs. And one of the reasons, or the reason why he's not signed a new contract with KZ Chiefs is because they were going to cut his salary by 60%, taking it to 200,000. But since there were also reports that he earned 800,000, that means he would have gone down to 320,000. We know that, right? It's a lo it's a it's a huge drop, but and you would think we would have earned that much money for the past 3 or 4 years, in lifestyle I can now revolves around that. I get that because if you think about it, you are a human being and you are get you get used to earning this much money, and if you're not going to sign the contract with the new team because they're offering you a, a lower wage, it's fair. Then, Ham, what I don't get, what I don't get is why stay until the 30th of June? Because there is something else that's related to this thing. What is it? So, according to the citizen, right, they are saying that someone, the source, their source, is saying that he knew that Ukama was not going to stay at Case Achieves from earlier on in the season because he wasn't motivated enough. I'm like, Kama, bro, you've been injured a lot since we had KZ Chiefs. I get the fact that the team has not been playing well, and you at some point they were calling us individual brilliant FC because it was Kama scoring or Dolly scoring or nothing at all. And because of that, we see in Gapak, Stababis is an individual FC, a individual brilliant FC. I get that, but seeing what the project had turned around the corner and they were trying to add more players, then I don't get where this motivation or lack thereof thing came from because he was also well compensated and the team was with him even throughout his injuries. So I don't get why they would say that was a factor in him not wanting to stay at KZ Chiefs. And also, just like they always say, I'm sorry, <laughs> when they say if someone leaves you, they usually have something planned. So in Chiefs, for example, Ukama has left the Chiefs and has not signed a new contract with the Chiefs, but still he's yet to be announced as a player of a new team, which makes me think, Uguti, then Ukama wasn't planning to leave all along because if that was the case, we saw with Unang, Uguti Chiefs didn't want to renew his contract. As such, it was quick, quick. Uguti is no longer with the Chiefs. He's been released. We've negotiated. We're not, we're not uh, extending contract tech. Same thing with Ukola Alexander. It was quick, quick. We've negotiated. Guti were giving him a package and he's leaving. Austin Dube didn't go to Nell Sprite. But now with Ukama, he was there with the team at some point, but then he ends up leaving. So to me, this thing, Yoguti, he was never, he never wanted to stay at KZ Chiefs or the fact that he already has a team lined up. To me, it doesn't make sense because then he wouldn't have stayed because technically he didn't actually need to come back because the players who came back it's because they were preparing for a preseason, for the season. They were there for a preseason. So then to me, it doesn't make any sense whatsoever why a player who had planned to leave since February, February would stay until the 30th of June and then disappear. But that's me. Ningang Jelakma comments, Nani. What do you think about that? Speaking of comments and engagement, thank you to everyone who has subscribed to the channel. Thanks to everyone who likes the video every day. Thanks to everyone who leaves their comments letting me know what they think. And a special member shout out today goes to Umoloko Cherry. Shout out to you, Umoloko Cherry. You can also become a member of this channel by clicking the link on the comment section. It's only 20 rents per month. You get member shout outs. You get loyalty badges. You also get priority reply to your comments. Let's move on to other comments. <laughs> comments that it was the comment, comment, not comments. A comment that was made by Ukezam Down June. So we talked about how last week kickoff reported something. I even forgot what they were talking about. And Kazam Dong Jr. came out and says false news. Today, once again, something similar happened because there was a report about who's this? Lanjesi Nkoma. I can't even read the name. But he's a Malawian winger 
who played really well uh, for what's the name of this team for Malawi in the Kosafa Cup. And now, obviously, any good player who plays well will be linked with the KZ Chiefs and then to kind of make everyone else aware about this player. And the Sokala Duma, they, they reported Uguti Chiefs have tabled an offer of 4.5 million and they wanted to sign him. It's a lot of money. It might happen. I, in case I'm down, Junior just responded to Sete Medi Bagiti. Now, be posted. It's not him who was reporting. It was just merely posting something from Latum. I think they work together somehow because he always posts things from Latum. Anyways, that's not the point. The point is, Kezam Daung dismissed that. And I will say this, I will say this. I get the point, Yoguti, Velabo Latum. Sometimes they might be fed wrong information by agents so that the player will get exposure because I didn't know about this winger. But since he's been linked with the KZ Chiefs, now I know about him. Uh, like over 10,000 people will watch this video and know about him. And a lot of people will now go to YouTube and start searching who he is. The next thing you know, people will be posting clips about him on Facebook or Twitter or wherever saying, ah, this player is good. Kaiser Chip should have gone for him. And they're not cheaper United since they don't have scouts clearly because they just sent out a tweet and a statement saying they want left backs to come. I don't know whether they are sending CVs or what, which is weird because usually when there are trials, they announce that there are trials. But this doesn't sound like I'm a trials. Because if I'm a trial, they just invite people. Then when people come, then they select players. But in this case, they wrote a letter as if they are saying, apply to be a left back at Chippa United. That's not the point. The point that I'm making is that now this player has exposure because of Ikeza Chiefs. And now teams can snatch and sign him. However, what I will say is this, Uguti. I am glad Ugutu Kezam Taung Jr. can come out and dismiss some of these things. Because, yes... For some of us who make content, I will never just make up news and, 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 and lie to you and say this is true. I will always say Guti who reported this because I'm not a journalist. I'm just, as I said, I'm a teacher who just loves case chips as well. So I say these things and bring them up so that we can discuss them with you guys. Guti, what do you think about them? Not to say, breaking news, this is what case chips are doing. No, I am glad Guti is dismissing these things because sometimes we end up getting angry with something that the team never even planned to do. But in a sense, we saw somewhere in the newspapers, Uguti, Kaiser Chiefs might be doing this. We end up being angry when they end up not doing it. But it was never their plan to even do it. So we'd rather be angry with the Chiefs for Uguti. No, they may be their cheap. They don't want to spend money on players. But not be angry with them for rumors that are not verifiable. You get me? So I'm glad that they are doing this. Of course, there are other things that are going to fall between the cracks, into the cracks, yeah. Fall into the cracks, and then they are not going to be addressed, which I am completely fine with. But as long as they address other issues. Speaking of issues they're not addressing, in Abaga Rowan Humans, as reported by Rowan Human, as reported by Unplayable, Uti Kaiser Chiefs are leading the race to sign him. But they are not going to sign him. You know why? Because last week it was reported Uguti, the price tag on his head is 12 million. But now there is a new report from Unplayable that says the price tag on Rowan Human's head is 10 million. It's not happening. Kaiser Chiefs couldn't spend 10 million for uh, on Mendieta, who is a most seasoned player, and I think he would have given us much more because Rowan Human, as good of a player as he is, he still needs to develop. Uh, Mendieta is already a complete player. He doesn't need developing. He's one of those players who'd hit the ground running and continue playing. And no, I'm not saying Uro and Human is a bad player. But there are players who dominate for their teams and then they get two chiefs. They don't do so well. You look at players even like take Umatlat. Umatlat, Guisualos was playing well, but they were fighting relegation. U Human was playing was playing well, Guisualos, but my respect. But they were fighting relegation. U Human, the Etta Gustel and Bosch, it was a team that was competing for a top three and it was constantly there and showing up for the team. So I am positive, Guti. He could have, he would have hit the ground running for his Chiefs. But to human, there's still that huge risk. Yes, he ages on his side. But for Chiefs to pay 10 million, even if he was 25 and was approaching his prime, or 27, 28, I don't think he Chiefs would have signed him still. So that 10 million price tag and Chiefs signing him, I don't think that's happening. In Zong Chela and Nigma comments, what do you think? And also, before you say, oh, they must go for Kapinga. Forget about Kapinga as well, because Kapinga is going to be Pirates most likely. Uh, 
<laughs> now let's talk about another one, a thing that has happened and that has been put in the past. So Im U Lawrence from Tiskitam, they reported to Guti, Nazareth Nabi has found a new team which is as far in Morocco. And once again, he was only allowed to have one technical technical team member with him. And people already on Twitter are so asking Guti, then why did he actually want more people at Kaiser Chiefs? And I will say this, Kaiser Chiefs is a bigger project. I am not saying as far as a small team, but if I was going to with that, if I was going to Alali, if I was going to the other teams, Amakulu, Lay North Africa, bigger teams, I think or Esperance at Tunis, he would have asked for more people. But I don't think we as far it's going to be as much pressure as there is coming to Kaiser Chiefs as there would be going to Alali. I'm not saying Chiefs Lingana no Alali, but we do have a fan base, a huge fan base. So there is more pressure and you need people who are used to that kind of pressure and who can work with you and assist you in doing those things. But we Chiefs would have obviously needed more people because if you don't hit the ground running we Chiefs by the end of the season, in fact, not even by the end of the season, after the first game, you lose the first game, the fans want you gone. So I get why it's obviously different that he got fewer members in that in the team compared to what he wanted from Kaiser Chiefs. And also, I will just throw this out there and say maybe there is also a possibility, Oguti. He had, because people hear these things, Oguti, Zwane sabotaged the previous coaches. I'm saying sabotage like this because I don't believe it. Sabotage the previous coaches as such. He wanted his own technical team because he wanted to make ensure that his chances of surviving or doing well at case achieves are guaranteed by making sure that he can control everything that he's doing in the team. So, okay, it's interesting because think about it. Going to your Morocco food, the language that they're speaking there, there's not going to be too much difference in the culture as well because it's going back to Morocco. It's better than coming to a completely new culture, completely new stuff, completely new everything. Yabo. That's just what I think. Nangangchela nanungu to what you think down in the comment section below. Thank you so much for watching. And until next time, remember, equals. Alpelu Mahoya.